Greetings. How's everybody today? Welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. Today we're going to take a good hard look at Amazon's 20 amp Variac. That's a mighty big piece of current for a very reasonable price. Pardon me for being skeptical right off the bat, but nevertheless, here it is. Now, this only applies to the 20 amp one. There are other ones that are smaller. Go big or go home. That's what I thought. And uh, so, I mean, it wasn't a lot of money. So uh, I bought it to test and do a bit of a review on here. And you might ask, well, why a Variac? Well, lots of reasons for a Variac. Um, we're going to build a, a dim bulb tester, but not like the same ones that everybody else builds. It's going to be a, a little bit of a different unit. And uh, we can use this at the starting of a dim bulb tester to very slowly bring up a radio to make sure that we've restored it properly. We've dealt with the power supply correctly or there's no shorts. Uh, rather than plugging it in or immediately turning a dim bulb tester on, we can bring it up very slowly. And uh, as you get into this, you may want to reform caps, capacitors. Uh, uh, let's say you've recapped a linear amplifier, but you haven't used it for a year. Maybe you want to bring it up slowly to let the caps reform and, and, and get back to where they should be. One of the very large re reasons for having a Variac is what you can see here. Um, this is my line voltage. It's showing 123 volts right now at 60 hertz. Um, when you get later on in the evening, it will climb as high as 125, almost 126, and it will drop down to about 120 during dinner hour when everybody in the area is using uh, stoves and whatnot uh, for cooking. That high voltage causes our old radios, the transformers in our old radios, to run very, very hot, like far outside of what the manufacturer intended. So you can use a Variac to dial the uh, voltage down to 110 volts or whatever the minimum is. Some of them, you know, I've run the even the recently the SX-76 down 105 and it's very happy running at 105 i noticed no performance change but what i do notice is is the transformer generates a lot less heat so this is something we really strongly should consider if we've got a really high line voltage if your line voltage is 120 or more you should really be considering a variac um, you know 117 is marginal 115 is nice 110 is good so those are some of the reasons why a Variac. I believe they're an important part of bench equipment for uh, anybody doing it restores. So let's uh, just uh, take a look at the uh, different types of Variacs. We're just going to throw up some schematics here so you get an idea of what's going on. This is the first kind of Variac. You don't see them very often. The uh, nice part about this is, is it has a primary... Uh, winding that's not attached to the to the secondary output winding, which kind of sort of makes a dual purpose unit, being that it would be also an isolation transformer and a variac. However, you don't see them very often. I think I've only ever seen one. They're not very common, and they're probably rather expensive. So that's not what we're dealing with with this Amazon 20 amp variac. This is what we're dealing with, is to where our AC load is directly connected to the transformer with the wiper. And this little wiper slides across the transformer on the top to give us our, our variable voltage output. So this is what our, uh, our Amazon 20 amp um, Variac is wired like. So if you read the reviews on Amazon about this unit, they're mixed. A lot of the reviews on Amazon are different to really um, equate to uh, you get a guy who gives it a bad review because it didn't quite work out the way he thought it would when he put it in a bathtub. Um, and then there are other people that say, if you buy this and you take it home and you plug it in, babies are going to die for miles around. So the reviews are spotty on this. But there are some chief complaints. 
Um, one of the complaints, well, all of the complaints are, are a concern, and we're going to test some of these things. We're going to test these all. Um, is that the grounded plug, although it was attached to the case, there was still paint on and where the connector attached and the case didn't get grounded. So we're going to check that out. We're going to check out, somebody said they use lead-free solder and all the connections inside are very brittle and very easy to break. Someone else said that the case is very flimsy. So uh, with that, let's just uh, get the, a meter out and uh, let's test the ground. Okay, we're set up with a, a basic continuity meter. It's going to give us a beep like this. I don't know if you can hear that when I when we have continuity. So if we check on this screw here, we have continuity, which tells me that the case is bonded at that point. There's a screw on the side here, which seems good. The screw on the top, nothing. That's a problem. That goes into this top panel here, and here's another screw on the top, nothing. So that tells me this top panel is not bonded to ground. That we're going to have to correct. So that's kind of important. There is a scale on the top here, and it's not very accurate, and it doesn't surprise me because its accuracy would depend on what the source line voltage is. If your line voltage is low, the scale will be out. If it's high, the scale will be out. But what I did notice in the lower ranges is accurate, in the upper ranges is not. But I mean, you can calibrate it quite easily by loosening the two screws and adjusting the arrow because we're going to be primarily using it in the 105 to 115 volt range or bringing it up from the bottom to 110 volts. So you can calibrate it. That's not a big issue at all. Um, this meter that's on the front of it, it's not very handy. Um, its resolution is just too poor. It is very difficult to tell the difference between 105 and 110 volts. Can you tell between 110 and 120? Kind of. It just doesn't have very good resolution. You have to kind of sort of raise a red flag. Why is this unit 20 amps? Maybe in some other parts of the world that's okay, but here in continental North America, 120 volts, 15 amps is a standard plug-in. So that last 5 amps, we're not going to be able to use. If we were able to plug something in and draw as much as 20 amps, we would trip the breaker in our house. So that's a big red flag to me. Another big red flag to me is this fuse holder. This fuse holder looks like a very light-duty fuse holder. I have reservations about that. So another thing that this is the instruction manual here. It doesn't say anything about duty cycle, like how long is it supposed to withstand 20 amps? Can it go 24-7 or is there a, a duty cycle to it? The instruction mentions nothing of a duty cycle. In fact, I found the instructions rather useless, to be honest with you. So let's real world test it. Here I've got an old, I guess what they call them, a micro ceramic micro furnace type of a heater here with two settings. It has 750 and 1500 watts so so six or seven amps versus close to 15 amps so i'm going to run it for an hour on the low the low section and then i'll run it for an hour on the high section and we'll see how our variac did and i've got our uh, chesty voltmeter now plugged into the variac so i'm just going to turn it all on here and uh, I'll, I'll shut this off and I'll come back after the hour, the two hours is up and I'll report what I found. But just so we can see here now, bringing it up to 120 volts. So there we are, we're on 750 watts. We're running around 120 volts. So we're going to let her run for an hour, see if there's any problems or any heating or anything that's funny that's going to go on here. But we're getting some good heat out of there, so I'll come back when this test is over. Well, it didn't test great. On 750 watts, it did well. I didn't get any issues of a problem. I didn't notice any heating. 
Um, it had, you know, a good six or seven amp draw on it for an hour. And I would say it worked very well. Uh, turning it up to the 1500 watt setting was another matter. After about 10 minutes, I noticed that the cord to the heater was starting to get quite warm. And I put my hand on the front casing and I noticed the front casing was also starting to get very warm. And I touched just around the fuse holder here and the fuse holder was absolutely smoking hot. The transformer inside itself wasn't warm at all, but I had a lot of heating, a lot of heating events going on inside this front panel. And I'm suspecting a couple of things. I'm suspecting the fuse holder is an issue. I'm suspecting they've used very poor quality wire inside. Now, one thing that I did notice, and I made a bit of a change, they sent it with four spare fuses. And I'll take a picture, a close-up picture of this so you can see it. One of the fuses has come apart, and they took this little tiny flat piece of wire, and they're calling this a 20-amp fuse, and they bent the wire over the glass tube, but the, the end fell off. And it's a tiny little wire, and it's barely bent over, and there was no real connection between it. it, was, it the fuse just falls apart, so that connection would have been extremely poor. So I went out and I bought North American 20 amp glass fuses to fit in here. And let's see if we can get it out here. Much beefier fuse, bigger bigger contacts on the end, and the proper length. These ones that came with the unit are just a little too short to make the, the normal requirement. So I redid my high test on the 1500 watt with a proper fuse, and it made a marked improvement. There wasn't as much heating. There was still some heating, but not as much heating. So the fuse and the fuse holder is a problem. So, as I was saying, I suspect that um, there's probably some very poor quality wiring inside. So, for me, the, ne the next step is to take it apart and see what's going on. So, that's what we're going to do next. Well, the Amazon reviews certainly didn't disappoint. I just give a little bit of a tug on this red wire here. It was soldered on the switch. And it... It came off with, without any struggle at all. And there's no solder residue left on the connector on the switch at all. So it's a very poor, very cold solder joint. I noticed that the supply cord they glued in is no longer glued down. I think this is maybe, oh, I'll have to find out whether it's 10 or, or 12 or 14 gauge wire. But between the wiring doesn't look so bad. But again, bearing in mind the ground, which is this one here, does exactly that. They've pinched it off behind a screw in the side there. And they've not removed the paint or done anything to properly ground it. So um, that has to be dealt with. And as well as getting this top part properly grounded. So uh, there are some things to do here. Um, I think I'm going to replace the fuse holder with a 15 amp button type breaker. I think I'm going to resolder this in its entirety. Um, I've not dealt with this lead free solder before, so uh, um, I'll uh, try evacuating as much of it as I can. And if I can use standard solder on top, great. If not, maybe I'll have to replace the plug connector. I don't know yet, but uh, so I'm going to wind this up here and I'm going to order some parts and uh, uh, get this fixed up. Um, is this a bit of a fuss? Yeah, it is. But for the price, it's not bad. The transformer inside is good. I got no issue with the transformer. It's made out of copper. It withstood the current. Um, but I mean, we're not going to be really using it at 10 or 15 amps for what we're doing in an amp or two at very best. Um, so it's an offer affordable alternative for a guy who's starting out who wants a variac to be able to bring his radios up or to take down the, the line voltage some so that his power transformers don't run hot. Uh, I I'm sure at some point you're going to find the, you know, an S40 is a good example or an S40B. You plug it in at 122 volts in the wall and you come back in a couple of hours and you touch that transformer. 
it's hot, hot enough to burn you. And kind of the old school of thought on that from the old timers that I dealt with was is after an hour or two of running, you should be able to put your hand on the transformer. It might be a little bit uncomfortable, but you should be able to put your hand on the transformer. And certainly these Halicrafters uh, aren't liking anything over 117, 118 volts. The transformers are heating up. So, you know, this is kind of sort of, let's call it a necessary evil. So let's spiff this one up. And uh, um, like I said, we'll call this one an end and I'll shoot a part two of everything I did to correct this problem and we'll go and we'll test it again. But I am derating it to 15 amps. There's no point of having 20. We, we can't use 20. It'll blow our house breaker. Um, so let's, let's keep that in mind as we're designing and going through. So for now, thank you very much for tuning in and we'll be back soon with part two. As the new Russian offensive hammers and tears chunks out of the Germans, dispatches said that everywhere along the long Russian front, the Nazis are either in retreat, surrounded, or menaced on the flank.